Hello, my name is Alicia Shapiro with AINews.com and welcome to another episode of our Driving Tomorrow, Conversations with Industry Leaders, where we explore the latest developments and newest innovations in the world of artificial intelligence. Today, I'm excited to speak with Jerry Sue, the founder and CEO of Vertex, a company pioneering AI-integrated workspace solutions. With a passion for innovation and user-centric design, Jerry has been dedicated to transforming the way we interact with technology in our daily work. At Vertex, Jerry has led the development of the groundbreaking Jethro V1 AI Mouse, a revolutionary tool designed to streamline productivity through seamless AI integration. In today's interview, we will dive into the inspiration behind the innovative product, the challenges and successes of the development, and the future of AI-powered workspaces. Thank you for joining us today, Jerry. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get started by asking you to please tell us about the inspiration behind Vertex and how did the Jethro V1 AI mouse come to be? What gap in the market were you aiming to fill? Yeah, for sure. So the inspiration behind the Vert, uh, Vertex Jethro V1 mouse come from the experience where I'm a heavy AI user and I noticed that a lot of AI applications are scattered around in different platforms, which mm -hmm. often complicate our workflow and you also have to pay for multiple different subscription fee if you want to use a specific function. For example, ChatGPT is great at content generation. And if you want to use image generation, then you have to maybe go apply for Midjourney or Delia. So when I was just using it, it really stopped my flow because now I have to use a different website to type in the URL, come back to my workflow. So at that time, I was thinking about how can I come up with a product that centralize all the necessary AI tool together, but also have a quick access way for me to quickly just use all the essential AI tools on the market. So that's the reason why we developed this AI mouse because this is really unique. It's a hardware and software integration. With that being mm -hmm. said, for example, I think one of the biggest thing people can agree is that you can do a lot of trans translation or voice recording through your computer, through your laptop, but it's complicated because not everyone know how to even enable their laptop uh, microphone and not everyone right. has a microphone on PC. So that's the reason why we integrated this special chips and a special microphone on our mouse where you just press and hold and it's able to record everything that you said, transcribe it, translate it the way that you want it to. And also the other two buttons is like when you click, it's quickly going to, going to open our VA software where it has chatbot, image generation, PowerPoint generation, and even rewriting tool. Because a lot of time for me, when I read the email, it's way too long. I can just highlight the entire thing, press the button, and the AI will just summarize everything for me instead wow. of copy and paste into ChatGPT or any other software that you're using that just simplify the steps. Yeah, that sounds very helpful and very innovative. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> And developing a product like your AI mouse must have come with its own set of challenges. What were some key obstacles that you faced during the development phase and what successes or breakthroughs stood out to you as you prepared for the launch? Yeah, so developing the uh, Jethro V1 AI mouse presents several challenges, particularly in training our own language model. Uh, mm. One of the things that I realized is that many extending AI model provide generic response which can be less affected when user needs specific output, such as like crafting tailored to their project or the thing that we're writing for. So one of our key breakthrough was creating a specialized model that focused on a specialized function. So one of the biggest thing is that we developed specific model for like article writing, PowerPoint generation, image generation, rewriting. So this AI is designed to do this small stuff, not like the huge generic, I'll just give you an input, you, you put an input and give you like a generic answer, but more like, okay, I'm specifically trained for long article writing. So when I give you uh, a, a title, it only does that. And we have trained for about like 20 or so about this small language model. Like we have event planning models, we can call it AI assistant as well. And we have a pre-built prompt inside this thing because we also know that not everyone know how to give a prompt to AI. I think people agree that now AI is booming, sure. but a lot of people just, because you're talking to a person, you have to effectively deliver your idea to AI for it to do uh, complicated stuff for you. So if you just type in ChatGPT, say, hey, write an article for me. It doesn't know how you want to format. It doesn't know what kind of style you want. So we simplify all of that stuff for you for a really simple interface or where you just give it a title, click like the tone that you want, 
how many words that you want, and then magic will happen. Once you click generate, everything will be in a correct format, correct like headline content, and then table of content, everything is generated for you. So I think that's a huge breakthrough in when we're developing this mouse, because one of the biggest thing is that we also want to introduce AI to non-AI user so that they can get connected to what's going on in the world right now. That's interesting that you're wanting to introduce AI to maybe non-AI tech users because those who aren't using AI now, it, this would be a good introduction to it to get used to it and know how it works and feel more comfortable with it. So then they're not as afraid AI is going to take their job or things like that. So that's a great way to look at that. Yeah, because I think you talk on a really important thing. A lot of people are afraid of using AI because they're thinking that AI is going to replace their job. But if you think more about it, you're actually going to be replaced if you don't know how to use AI yes. because AI is so effective. For example, one of our tool is summarization. You upload a document onto it and the AI will just read everything for you. Any question you ask is going to find the answer specifically from that article. If you know how to navigate this and use this as your advantage to absorb more knowledge or write reports, stuff like that, you can save so much time. So one of the projects that you might have to spend for three hours, now you only have to spend one hour. You have two extra hours that you can do. And I think this is how people need to start conceptualizing that you use AI as a tool, not against, mm -hmm. I don't want to use it because I'm afraid that it's going to take my job, but you actually have to use it in your advantage. Yeah, that's so important. And the mouse also uh, focuses heavily on user privacy, offering AI tools without the account creation or cloud storage. Why did you choose to prioritize this approach and how does it set Vertex apart from other AI powered devices? So in today's digital landscape, many AI tools require users to create accounts, which often means sharing their personal information, such as names and email. And this can be really troublesome and concerning because, as I said, if you want to use all the AI tools, you have to create multiple different accounts. And mm -hmm. even though they say they're not going to collect your account, they're not going to collect your name to use it to train their data. But if there's a hacker that hacking through your system, now all of your information is being leaked. And AI can like all the data of what you input over there. So for example, I'm Jerry and I, today I type in, oh, how do I make boba tea? Or where can I go to grab the best boba tea inside in New York? And now the AI will know what my preference, what my personal life look like. And I think that's super scary. So it when is. we develop this mouse, we really want people to be comfortable typing the information that they want to ask and not worry about their data being tracked back or get leak out if, if their server get hacked. So at Vertas, we prioritize users of privacy by eliminating the needs for account creation. So now you don't need to share your name, you don't need to share your email. Our approach allows users to create powerful AI tool without having to provide their personal information. So they don't have to worry about, okay, how is my information being processed? Does AI know what I like? Uh, is there any chance of hacker tracking back where I am, stuff like that? And then the other thing that we're constantly thinking about is sometimes for this, it's not enough for people. So we have been working towards and developing a fully offline AI feature that can either process locally, or if you want to use like MPU or your computer to process it, everything will be done locally. So now you don't need to co uh, connect to internet. I think this is super beneficial for a lot of user if they prioritize like privacy as like everything, because I know a lot of people, they just don't want to share anything from any information on internet. And yeah. on top of that, if we do have that function, that means you can have uh, AI feature when you're traveling as well, because for me personally, I do travel quite a lot and I'm on airplane most of the time. And when I don't have internet, I can use AI to check a lot of uh, my work or summarize stuff for me. So if you do have this option for people that travel a lot and they can use essential AI function on like offline mode, I think that's super, super great. So that's something that we're always working towards with. And once we have that, people don't have to worry about privacy because now everything is processing locally. You don't have to go through cloud. Exactly. That's so great for data privacy issues. That's amazing. You did that. And one of the features we've mentioned is that this AI mouse can help you improve your workflows. How do you see this changing the way people interact with AI in their daily workflows? Yeah. So for our mouse specifically, 
one of the unique features is that it has a microphone inside. So for me personally, I do speak two different languages, but I type super slow in Mandarin, or I don't even know、mm. what to say sometimes because English is my、uh, native native language. So a lot of time, all I have to do is grab my mouse and then I speak English to it, and then it will just transcribe to another language for me instantly. And I think that's how in the future things will work because we at Vertex we firmly believe that. In the future, talking is a way of interacting with AI. There might not be any interface in the in, in next three or five years because, as humans, we're always thinking about how to simplify our workflow. So that's the reason why we create this tool. This is just the beginning of everything that we can speak to AI. On top of that, like I said, mentioned earlier, with our summarization tool or lo- long article writing, a lot of academic user they can just upload a lot of their files, learn faster, how to generate their project. And if you're a content creator, like AI can really help you to inspire like the picture you want. It might you might not use the picture they generate for you, but that can be used as oh, this is like the style I want. And then once it generated for you, then you can go on and further edit it the way you want it to. Yeah, that's gonna make things so much simpler. Not having to sign into new accounts and switching between tabs and just being able to keep working would be so amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes, and launching a product like Vertex, it, it often involves more than just the development phase. There's also the building awareness and getting early support. What role has your Kickstarter campaign played in bringing this vision to life, and how has the response been so far? Yeah, so one of the biggest reason why we pick Kickstarter as our start for this project is because we realize that in Kickstarter campaign, the people who is willing to back you up, they actually have the same goal and vision that we carry, and they're more willing to share their opinions, their feedback, and not criticize your product because there are some aspect that we know we lack, and we really do want people to give us feedback because ultimately we're trying to create something that help the user to. Make their workflow better, faster, more productivity, stuff like that. So we pick Kickstarter, and right now the response has been really great because we've been seeing a lot of engaging. We reach our goal just in one day, and so far everything is going strong. And how we envision this brand to grow is that Kickstarter is just the beginning. Later on, we're gonna start on our website, and once we're more established, we're definitely gonna go into bigger e-commerce websites such as Amazon and going to retail store to continue to build our brand and continue to have a customer base that believe and willing to grow with us. That's great that you did that. You raised your goal in one day. Wow, that shows the demand for it. People are obviously wanting to improve their workflows and see how amazing this could be. That's great. And looking ahead, how do you envision the next steps for Vertex after the AI mouse? Are there any exciting features or future products you're working on that you can share with us? Yeah, so looking ahead, we envision a future where Vertex continue to innovate. At a interaction of the hardware and software, combining these two aspects together, and as I mentioned above earlier, is that we also want to、uh, let people know that we believe that voice interaction with the AI is going to be the future, and、mm-hmm. talking is just a, a form of how you are going to、uh, give AI to do a lot of command and direction. So, for example, I believe that everyone watch movies, and Marvel has a famous character called Iron Man. If people are famous with it, you talk to the AI and he can just process all the stuff for you, show the information、right. on the screen, and you ask it to book a, like a ticket for you, and it can instantly book everything based on your personal preference. So in the future, I do believe that everyone is going to have like their personal AI as their life assistant as they grow. So this is super important, and we aim to achieve that because we wanted to create a AI assistant that is safe. People don't have to worry about. Maybe it's gonna get hacked, and all my information is being leaked. Because imagine it grows with you and knows everything about you. If that thing get hacked, then your entire life is in, being exposed under the sunlight.、Yeah. So we are constantly working on towards that direction, making sure privacy is our first priority for the user, and second is that voice is something that we we so value that we believe is going to be the future. That's great. And before we wrap up, I'd like to shift to a couple of lighter questions so our audience can get to know you a little better. When you do step away from work, what activities or hobbies are you、uh, most passionate about? Usually, when I step out from work, I usually just go out, do some 
weight training. And also I play guitar as well because I feel like that's a way to form for me to relax and just enjoy myself because playing guitar, singing by myself, that really helped me to calm down my mind on the workflow and all the noises from the world. Yes, that's awesome. And as a successful founder in the AI hardware space, what advice would you give to someone looking to start their own journey in AI technology and product development? Yeah, so my advice will be that, as I said, how I see is that privacy is such a huge thing. A lot of company right now, they're using their consumer or the user as like their training base. So I believe that privacy will become so big that it's no longer going to be a gray area that government is not controlling right now. So if you don't want to have your own AI technology or product development, I strongly recommend you to think about how you want to secure your data for your customer, because now you're Yes. providing a server, you have to put customer in first instead of like your own company benefit and how you want to utilize their personal information. Because in this digital work, you know that personal information means kind of everything. Like when you go online, if you know what you like, they'll just constantly put those ads in front of your face. And you're like, oh, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to purchase this product because it shows so many times. So how do we prevent that from happening? Because you don't want to be a company that just takes people's money, but you also want to provide and improve their life. That's great advice and is so important to think about future developers moving forward because user privacy is going to be a much larger issue moving forward. You're right. I believe that's Sure. correct. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jerry, for joining us today and sharing your insights about your new AI mouse with us. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you and learning more about the AI mouse and how it's a poised to revolutionize AI-driven workspace. I think it's really going to make a big difference. Thank you for having me today and have this opportunity to speak with you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, of course. I'm glad to have you on. And for those interested in staying updated on the Vertex AI mouse or supporting the Kickstarter campaign, you can visit the Kickstarter page and I'll put a link in the description for you to check that out. Keeping you connected to tomorrow. Today, this is Alicia with AINews.com.